Hey everyone, Chivos here, bringing you my Hyundai A-League fixture review for the fixtures of week 11. Now what a week it was, there were some prizes, but uh, just just one we really need to look at. So, the first game of the weekend saw Newcastle Jets draw nil all with Adelaide United. Now, a nil all, it's always a boring game. Sometimes I say it'll be the most eventful nil all you'll ever see. Um, it was It was decent. But it wasn't the best. So it's the second time that the sides have met this season, and in both fixtures we were given the same result, which is obviously a nil all draw. Now Karuska came close not once but twice for Adelaide United, and was denied by the woodwork either time and once in each half. Polyak came close for Newcastle, but his header was unable to get past the woodwork and find the back of the net. So three. Uh, uh, real opportunities there that all hit the post. Unfortunately, there for both sides. But I guess both sides would be happy with a point. You know, this this point on in the season, picking up points is what you need. So as long as you're picking up points, you can progress up the table. So you can't really complain about that. So, but the thing that worries Newcastle is they are now winless in seven, while Adelaide United are unbeaten in three. So Newcastle. Still struggling to find what they had at the start of the season. And Adelaide, unbeaten in three, finally starting to pick up some form. But both sides still see themselves sitting in the lower half of the table. So unfortunate for both sides there. Now, the second game of the weekend saw Wellington Phoenix draw one all with Sydney FC. Both goals were scored late in the second half, but a 90th minute penalty so Wellington managed to pick up a point. Now Holosko, he didn't really make quite an impact when he first came to the A-League, but he's starting to find some form now. So Holosko scored for Sydney by dragging two Wellington players and curling his strike past Moss into the back of the net. So Holosko has now scored 2-2. Two two. It's good to see him on the score sheet. Uh, Jax Fatty made a mistake at the back when he fouled Tom Doyle inside the box. You know what that means. It, it means a penalty. Krishna, the man in form, stepped up and slotted home to get the point for Wellington Phoenix. So it all looked like 90th minute drama and Wellington managed to snatch and grab a point. So you can't complain about that. O'Neill came close in the first half with a dead ball situation, but the ball bounced off the underside of the bar and back into play. So a very close but no cigar. Now, both sides will be happy with a point after losses last week, but Sydney will feel they deserve the three points, which they didn't manage to get. So Sydney FC still struggling, and I, I don't... I'm, it's, it's a really confusing season. Like, obviously you've got some dominant teams, but the big two, you can call them, Sydney and Melbourne Victory, really starting to struggle. Now, the third game of the weekend that saw Melbourne City beat Melbourne Victory... 2-1 in the Melbourne Derby. Yes, my team did lose to Melbourne City. And uh, what do you expect? Melbourne City have been in a fine form. And they managed to recreate that, although it was a low-scoring affair. So, obviously, City had scored 16 in their last three, I think it was. And uh, they only managed to score two. But goals from Mork and Retre were enough to see off my team at Melbourne Victory. But Bessart Brisha managed to score for Victory which uh, sees him score for the first time in a few fixtures, which is good to see. And obviously, Fornaroli didn't score, Barisha did. He's slowly going for the golden boot. But I've already reviewed this game. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below so you can see the full match review there. Now, the fourth game of the weekend saw a bit of an upset. It was Perth Gorey drawing 2-0 with Western Sydney Wanderers. That's right, Western Sydney Wanderers. Now, Diego Castro opened up the scoring for Perth Glory 73 seconds after kickoff. Yeah, well, that was a quick goal, wasn't it? Castro brought down was brought down by Redmayne inside the box. Castro then stepped up and slotted home into the bottom left corner to make it 1-0. Santalab leveled the score for the away side after a well-worked corner from Western Sydney Wanderers. It was played short. It was played to the top of the box. It was shot. Sandslab managed to score. So it's good to see him on the score sheet once again. But Mitch Oxborough 
Now, what a strike this was. He gave the home side the lead again on the hour mark when the youngster scored an amazing free kick from 30 yards out. Now, you question why there's a youngster on the, on, on the dead ball, especially when you got people like Sydney Castro or so-and-so in, in, in your team. But Oxborough, the left footer, decided to step up. From 30 yards, he gave it a fair crack and managed to score. So... It was an amazing free kick. It's going to be on the hit. highlight reels for come. And I tell you now, I guarantee you that is a contender for goal of the season. If that wins it, I would not be surprised. It was a fantastic goal. Like, unbelievable. But, unfortunately, it wasn't enough as Mitch Nichols scored the equaliser 10 minutes from time. Pia Vakari works some magic before playing the ball to Nichols, who slotted it into the top right-hand corner. Oh, and although the result ended in a draw, Perth Glory were leading uh, for up until the last 10 minutes, and they did concede an unfortunate goal. So they'll be disappointed not to take the three points, but they'll be more than happy to take a point against Western Sydney, considering Western Sydney were unbeaten in seven. So Perth will be happy with that, but... Western Sydney Wanderers obviously didn't didn't win, so they didn't make it eight in a row, but they are still eight unbeaten in a row. So Western Sydney Wanderers still flying. It's good to see them pick up points, but they did drop points to Brisbane Raw because Brisbane Raw managed to beat Central Coast Mariners 1-0. And what do you expect? It's Central Coast. Give me a break. Anyone can beat Central Coast this, this season. If you're not beating Central Coast, you really have a problem. Now... Petratos scored the only goal of the game in the 85th minute when he struck a powerful left foot strike inside the far post. Now, the loss sees Central Coast without a win in their last 10 games and still winless since the first game of the season. So Central Coast really struggling. I can guarantee you they will want the next two weeks to hurry up because that January transfer window will open. I'm sure they will try and make some additions to their squad because at the moment, things are not working out for them at all. But Brisbane Raw do help their title push. Considering Western Sydney Wanderers did manage a draw, Brisbane Raw picked up an extra two points on Western Sydney Wanderers, which does see them edge slowly and slowly closer to the number one position on the table. But it's now time to show you the A-League ladder. I will bring it up on my screen now. And here it is, Western Sydney Wanderers. Top the ladder with 23 points. Brisbane Raw on 21. So Western Sydney, we quite heartbroken they've dropped two points there because Brisbane Raw have picked up two. And uh, there's only a two-point gap now. So Western Sydney Wanderers really starting to feel threatened. Melbourne City sit in third place on 20 points. So the top three very, very close. But then Sydney FC on in fourth place have gone up the table on 17 points. There are still two wins from top of the table. My team, Melbourne Victory, sits at the halfway point in fifth. And uh, 16 points with only a one goal difference. Things have really gone sour for us. We do need to turn things around. So, Wellington Phoenix sit in sixth. 15 points, no movement from them. Still on a zero goal difference. No, you can't really complain about that. Newcastle in seventh, 13 points. Two off the top six, so they'll be happy with that. They need to... Hopefully, they, really, they need a win. If they can start winning some games, their chances of the finals will be a lot better. Perth Corey managed to pick up a point. It puts them up into eighth position. And, uh, you know, it, it's good. They've picked up a point on average per game. And it's it's a good it's a good pace, considering their poor start to the season. Their, their goal difference is still terrible. But Perth Corey slowly climbing. Adelaide United... Also on 10 points. I don't understand how Perth have uh, have climbed the table because I think Adelaide Adelaide drew and Perth Glory drew. So very very confusing. I you know it, it doesn't make sense. It honestly doesn't. But oh well, both teams drew. Adelaide United have dropped points. Who cares? Central Coast Mariners on the bottom. Obviously eight and two draws in their eight losses, two draws in their last 10 games. A real struggle there. So we will now scroll down to the top goal scorer. It's still Bruno Fornaroli. He didn't pick up a goal this weekend. But Bessart Brisha is on seven. Now we have three players on six. Krishna, Nichols, and Aaron Moy all on six. So the golden boot is actually very tight 
so far this season. You know, it could be anyone's at this point. Aaron Moy, seven assists. Browich on five. Krishna, Jamison, and Gruccio all on three. Most saves. Bosa Sorensen on 44. He now tops the list. Birgetti with 42. Glenn Moss, Ante Kovic, and then Paul Izzo. So Sorensen proving he's a big, big feature for Melbourne City. And without him, they'd certainly be a lot worse for wear. Completed passes is still Miguel Angel Garcia Perez, 731. Sanchez is slowly catching with 723. But uh, it looks like Miguel Angel will hold it unless Sanchez can start doing something there. And the most clearances is now Lee Broxham. That's right, Ben Sigmund looked uncatchable a few weeks ago, but his injury really hurt him. Lee Broxham tops the clearances at 44, Sigmund on 43, Manny Musgrave on 42, and Matthew German on 41. But you see, although Wellington are 6th and they have a uh, 0 goal difference, only on 15 points, 3 of the 5 players in the most clearances are Wellington Phoenix players. So it shows you that Wellington Phoenix are doing quite a job defensively and they could be a lot worse off if their defence wasn't so good. But that is it for my Hyundai A-League fixture review for the, witches, the, the fixtures of Week 11. Make sure you leave a like if you've enjoyed the content. Don't forget to subscribe to see more Hyundai A-League videos. And I'll catch you guys on another video.